Welcome back. Today we will be talking about LLMs. So what does LLM stand for? LLM stand for Large Language Models. And you might also have some references on social media now with LLMs getting a little more popular thanks to ChatGPT. ChatGPT's foundational model is based on LLMs, Large Language Models. And this series of videos I'm creating are for beginners. So we'll go a little more deeper into LLMs, not just the fluffy uh, you know, definition itself, but how these LLMs are actually built. So we'll go a little more deeper under the hood and try to understand large language models. So the first step in understanding large language models is to understand word vectors. Word vectors. What are these again? These are representations, uh, which I'll go into a little detail very soon. Before going into word, word vectors, let's look at how um, you know words are used by humans. So large language models, like I said, uh, if you look at lang large language models, if you just look at language for humans, uh, they are comprised of words. So words would uh, be something even a baby uh, would be uh, recognizing. So some of the simplest words we can think about are dogs and cats and apples and bananas. I'll talk about dogs and cats for a bit. But um, when we think about words, um, these are, a, uh, you know, a series of characters uh, stringed together. And these words mean something to you, right? So for us, words mean something because there's a sequence of characters. Uh, and if it's sequence dot right, C plus A plus T, it means cat. But when we look at word vectors, we'll talk about vectors, but essentially when we think about large language models, these words are represented as a series of numbers. So for example, cat, let me use this pen here for a bit, cat is a series of numbers starting with 0 0.0074 it keeps on going a lot of numbers right high precision numbers for that matter like if you look at this high precision uh, and including negative numbers right so it's interesting that you have positive numbers negative numbers but a series of probably around 300 numbers uh, to represent cat in a vector. I'll explain a vector in a bit, but that's how large language models represent this word. Now, if you think about cat, um, why would they need to represent this in a, in a, you know, this is not an easy, <laughs> easy thing to remember, but uh, there's a reason why they're doing this. But before I go into that, let me explain something. Let's imagine, let's imagine a city in um, in the world let's let me take my favorite city because i live there now <clears throat> austin which is in texas so if i say austin is four and i represent austin austin with the number four there's a reason why i'm doing this number one is uh i mean not there's only one reason <laughs> the reason is within texas um austin remains the fourth largest city uh trailing houston San Antonio and Dallas in terms of population. So slightly below Dallas as I speak, and it could probably be higher after a couple of months, depending on how many immigrants come into Austin, how many people move from other cities into Austin. But right now, as I speak, it is number four. So the reason why I put four here is because Austin is the fourth most populous city in Texas. Is that a good representation? You know what? I cannot just say Austin equals four. I have to give a little bit more context here. Austin is four in terms of population, right? I'm not writing the whole thing down, but you get the idea, right? Population. So uh, if I don't give that context, how would how would people know that Austin is number four, right? So population gives that context. And again, I need to give more context. And the context is Austin is number four in Texas. So that all thing, all these things, if it's lost, then this number four doesn't make any sense. Let's talk about something else which might make more sense. If you think about Austin in terms of a map, it has something like this, <clears throat> coordinates. So you have a 
northwest coordinate and uh, you know longitude and latitude. If I represent Austin in this manner, which is pure numbers, and north and west, a lot of us would understand what this means, right? So longitude latitude for Austin is very precise because <clears throat> there's no other city in this longitude and latitude at 30.2 north degrees north and 97.7 degrees west. So it's a very precise representation. Less room for misinterpretation because of the way this is this this is uh, described, right? So now the question is, <clears throat> what is a good way to represent, um, you know, words? And a good way to represent words is in space. In this case, I used a geospatial thing, right? Let me write it down with a nice pen. So it's in, in terms of space representation, right? So this is a space representation of Austin. But uh, in terms of, uh, you know, for large language models, they can also represent words in terms of space too. So if you think of a, think about a multidimensional space, right? And we talked about cat in the past. We can have cat and dog in a specific space. And I'll, I'll show you something very interesting here, right? So I'll bring this up. So I, I use this um, thing to showcase where, let me just uh, get the screen right here so we can, okay. So the question I'm asking, and I'll give the link in this video a little later, is show me all words which are related to cat uh, from the English Wikipedia um, uh, in a space, in the space, in this space. In this case, it's a, it looks two-dimensional. It could be a three-dimensional space or multi-dimensional space. Um, uh, and if you look at it, if I look at the high frequency or high, uh, high relationship type words close to cat, I'll just use cat or, or uh, as the anchor word, you'll see that there's dog, and this rabbit. I, if you know what <laughs> why rabbit is related to cat, let me know. Put some comments here. I'm I'm still struggling to find out why a rabbit would be from a word relationship would be related to cat. But I understand dog. You know, cat and dogs. There's some when you think of cats, you think of dogs. So there's some relationship there. And then if I let's say medium frequency, let's look at the low frequency for a change. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you see that. This feeling, which is uh, uh, use meow, <laughs> the word meow, it's coming close to a cat. And you could drag and check out how that is. Yeah, interesting. Let me try high frequency, high frequency again. Um, there you go, cat and dog. And let me pull this out and see. Dog is definitely closer to the cat than rabbit. Poodle is closer to dog. You get rat here a little farther away from dog. So you get the idea. So these words are related and you could see that in a specific representation here, right? And you remember that early screen I showed you where I had the vector data, which is in numbers. If I click on that, you'll see all the vector information on the screen, which starts with the point zero zero seven, keeps on going, keeps on going, keeps on going. This is how the cat is represented in as a word vector, as a word vector, right? So a lot of numbers representing this cat. Anyways, going back to the, um, going back to my slide before I had it here somewhere. Um, let me just check. Okay, thought I had it here. Oh, it's right behind the screen, so I'll close this. There we go. So if you look at the space and if you look at these dimensions, and the dimensions I'm using here is breadth and legs. <clears throat> so what can breathe and have legs? Humans do, for sure. But in this dimension, dogs and cats are much closer. So there's this concept of closeness of these words in space, in vector space. And we'll talk about vector space uh, in some other video, but assume that you know this there's a multidimensional space and I'm using legs and breadth as dimensions. And cat and dog actually comes into the breadth, breadth legs plane, right? So they're much closer in the breadth legs plane. Then if I said, if I extended the space, let's assume this keeps on going, right? The space, I'm not perfect, but you get the idea. It's in this, in this plane, humans are farther away. Maybe I should use a different color because I'm using red all across. Uh, let's do this. Let's use black. 
Okay, so if I extended this plane, or maybe green, imagine this plane came from going all across, right? So this is one plane. Humans also exist in the plane. <clears throat> same plane, right? Humans also exist in this plane. But they're much farther away to the cat and dogs in that plane. Why? Because cats and dogs are much more closer to each other from a word relationship point of view. Like they're used in more frequently together in other contexts. You get the idea, right? Now, if you look at this plane, however, which is the speaks plane, let's imagine this is a different plane. <clears throat> So it's a multi-dimensional multi space. So I'm using this leg speaks plane, right? Let's say this keeps on going this way, right? And I color this the yellow plane, right? In this yellow plane, unfortunately, cats end up, even though it's overset, it's, you can imagine it, right? This plane has humans or human in it. So that's how that's how LLMs work, and this is the fundamental building block for an LLM or large language model, word vectors. And word vectors are, like I mentioned, are just representation of words in some kind of numeric value, but in a multi-dimensional space. In the next video, I'll talk about word vectors and relationship between these word vectors and how large language models use it to uh, find, you know. Um, use it as a as a as a building block for uh, predictions, for example. Right. So we'll go through that in the next video. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you understand large language models much better. Uh, and this was meant for beginners, like I said. So uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. And